Hey, welcome. So um, today what we're going to be talking about is anemia and uh, how important it is to make sure that you're not in an anemic state. So if you haven't listened to any of my other videos, uh, you're going to want to listen to these other videos where I explain blood work and how to actually interpret blood work. Now one of the things when it comes to anemia is anemia is when you don't have enough uh, iron in your uh, in, in, in your bloodstream or in your body. It can be either due to not enough iron or it can actually be due to vitamin B12 and folic acid. So in this webinar, I'm going to be focusing on two things. I'm going to be focusing on iron and then B12 as well. So just when we talk about lab work, all right, so remember I used the, the analogy like the piano string, your piano string, and you might have, uh, you know, there's 83 strings in the piano. You might have 20 strings that are out of sync, and you might have five strings that are broken. So the broken strings are where the conventional system would say, hey, you, you have a problem. But then you might have another 10 or 20 strings that are out of sync that would be totally not addressed. So when it comes to functional medicine, there's a couple top priorities that you need to handle. One, one top priority is you need to make sure that you do not have any tendencies towards being anemic. That, not that you, you would be diagnosed as having anemia, but you show these tendencies towards being anemic. So you want to handle that. I mean, if you have any disease process, a chronic disease pro process, chronic fatigue, irritable bowel, Crohn's disease, Crohn's disease uh, RA, lupus, Sjogren's disease, chronic fatigue, MS, uh, Alzheimer's disease, uh, brain fog, any disease that you have, chronic disease, you need to make sure that you have normal, healthy, functioning, iron status, vitamin B12 status, and folic acid status. So when it comes to functional medicine, the first thing that you're going to address right away is, is, is uh, uh, an anemic state or what I like to call you have a physiological tendency. Physiological just means like your body, your, your body's processes look like it's leaning towards an anemic state. The second thing is that you want to make sure that you normalize is your blood sugar. So these are the two top priorities in any case that comes to me if I see any physiological tendencies towards anemia and blood sugar, we're addressing these immediately. So this next slide, I'm going to start off uh, on with a video here. Uh, I think their videos state are good because it kind of gives you, um, uh, you know, visual aid. So I'm going to kind of walk you through this process as we go through the video. But what we're, 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 we're looking at initially is we're initially looking at your lung bringing in oxygen and delivering that to the red blood cell. Gas freely circulating in the air, dissolving into a solution in the plasma within the capillary alveoli. Once in the solution of the blood... So what I want to bring your attention to right here is you can see this is the lung. That's your lung right there. And all these little specks right here, those are oxygen. So you can see how the, the oxygen diffuses through the cell membrane and into the red blood cell okay so these things right here are your red blood cell so what happens is if you don't have enough iron okay if you don't have enough iron or you have poor iron status you're at the bottom of the lab range this oxygen cannot grab onto the red blood cell because what is grabbing onto what allows the oxygen to grab onto the red blood cell is guess what Iron. So if your levels of iron have a physiological tendency to, to be towards the bottom range, you are not effectively grabbing all the oxygen in your body. So uh, let's go on here. It's going to expand a little bit more. Ninety-eight percent of this dissolved oxygen is taken up by passing red cells, leaving just two. So you can see that again, that oxygen fusing over the one cell membrane into the red blood cell. Percent remaining in the physical solution unattached. Red cells are particularly well. Okay, now what we're doing is we're zooming into the heme 
the hemoglobin of the red blood cell. And as I go through the webinar here, you'll, you'll understand more of that. Suited to transporting oxygen because they contain a special oxygen binding protein known as hemoglobin. Each molecule of hemoglobin itself contains four molecules of heme, an iron-containing pigment, which binds oxygen loosely and re Okay, did you see just what happened right there? This is, this is really critical. It is right in here, right there, that showed, that showed the iron. That was the iron molecule, right? And then if you saw two little balls that were coming in here, they were attaching to the iron. This right here, that was the oxygen. That was the oxygen molecule, so it attached right on to the heme there, the iron. Now look at this thing right here. This red blood cell is kind of like dark uh, bluish. That would be the vein. Like if you see your veins in your skin, they're, they're dark blue. This is what ha what's happening. If you don't have oxygen on your, your red blood cells, the blood is actually bluish. Now when you start to oxygenate, oxygenate that cell, that's when it turns, uh, that's when it turns red. Versibly. That's fully saturated. So there you go, it turns red right red there, and fully is called oxygenated. oxyhemoglobin. On the other hand, hemoglobin that is not saturated with oxygen is purplish blue in color and is called deoxyhemoglobin. It is heme which makes it possible for the red cells to pick up oxygen dissolved in the blood, transport it combined with hemoglobin, and re So again, what you're seeing there is the two oxygen molecules attaching to the iron molecule release it back into the blood oxygen in solution ready for delivery then here what you're seeing right here is you're seeing the oxygen this is red you see how it's red it's diffusing the oxygen into the tissues okay so this is really critical I mean if you have any chronic disease you need to make sure that you have normal iron status and I can't tell you how many people come to me and they have abnormal iron status is not that they could be diagnosed with being anemia uh, but they have a physiological tendency towards being anemic so they don't have an optimal iron capacity or an optimal not an iron not an optimal iron capacity and not an optimal oxygen delivery system free to the various cells of the body Hemoglobin gives up its oxygen as red cells travel through capillaries in tissues where there is a low content or partial pressure of oxygen. The partial pressure of oxygen represents the level of dissolved oxygen in plasma. As oxygen is released and again is carried in solution. Okay, so let's go on to the next slide. So where does the red blood cell, where are these things actually made? I think it's, it's important for you to actually know that. So they actually come from the bone marrow. All right, so red blood cells, all your white blood cells are born, are birthed in your bone marrow. Now, a critical point with this is your red blood cells, your white blood cells are all made out of proteins. You need proteins. So this gets back to the functional, uh, functional approach is you have to make sure that you are digesting your food. So if you have any constipation, diarrhea, irritable bowel, gas, bloating, acid reflex, you're not actually absorbing all your nutrition out of your food. And consequently, you might not even be able to make the proteins here, you might not even be able, be able to make these proteins at the end of the day that actually make up the red blood cell and the white blood cell. And then on top of that, you probably don't even have enough iron to actually attach to the red blood cell that you actually made. So really, when you look at the functional medicine approach, we're, we're really taking a whole body approach and making sure that all your systems are really working together. So what we're going to be talking about is the blood. So exactly, you know, what aspect of the blood are we going to be talking about? So if you went to the lab, you had your blood pulled, all right, so that's all the blood, right? So then what they do is they spin it. They put it in a, in a centrifuge and they spin it. Then what happens is then things separate this would be your, your, plas your plasma. What's in plasma? That would be your magnesium, your potassium, um, your sodium. Glucose is in here. All the minerals are in there. Uh, all the proteins that help deliver things around in, in your body are in the plasma. Then we have the white blood cell count, and you can see really how small it is. 
And then we have the right the, the red blood cell. So what we're going to be talking about specifically in this webinar is we're specifically going to be talking about that aspect right there, the spun out red, red blood cells. So when you, sp you spin this out, you can see that your plasma should be about 55%. White blood cells, only 1%, and then the red blood cells are 45% of, of this whole thing right in here. So what exactly is anemia? This is just kind of a broad-based uh, definition. So anemia is a condition that develops when your body lacks enough healthy red blood cells. So a couple things. It doesn't have enough red blood cells or it doesn't have enough hemoglobin. So those are two separate things. And as we walk through the webinar, you'll understand. But quickly here, the red blood cells are, are these actual individual things. So one, you don't have enough physical red blood cells. That could be one problem. The second problem could be that you don't have enough hemoglobin within the red blood cells. So what I mean by that is you watch that video and it showed you the, uh, the hemoglobin molecule where the iron attaches to, if, if you recall that. If you don't have enough hemoglobin, then guess what? The oxygen, the oxygen can't actually attach to the red blood cell. All right, so these are the markers that we're going to be covering when it comes to uh, your blood work. Now, generally speaking, these markers right here, these markers right here, and I'll be going over these, those top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, these seven markers right here are generally done on pretty much any basic standard lab. So if you're out there right now, you could pause this video, go look for your blood work, and see if they've done these basic tests. So generally, in my experience, the general uh, medical profession will run these seven tests. Now, they never run this test right here, which is called your ferritin, and we'll be getting into that. Out of all the markers that show you being anemic or having a tendency, tendency towards anemia, the ferritin is the most critical one, and that's just not ran in the standard uh, panel out there in the, in the conventional system. So uh, this is one of my patients. So this is their labs right there. And then what we have over here, this would be the standard medical lab. Okay, so the next thing I wanna cover is hemoglobin. So hemoglobin, that's the next thing that we're going to cover. So let's go over to our lab. So we're gonna start looking at this lab right in here, the hemoglobin. So let's go over exactly what hemoglobin is. Um, actually, before I do that, let's, let's go over the lab ranges. So this is the hemoglobin. So this is on my patient right there, which is a 12.3. Now this is the lab range right here is 11.7 to 15.5. Now, this right here is what I would call the functional range. So what does that mean? That means this is where healthy human beings live is in this range right here. So this is the range that we want you to be in to have optimal oxygen delivery to every cell in your entire body. You have 100 trillion cells in your body. So hemoglobin, this level right here, is the most optimum level that we want for optimum oxygen delivery. So when I go over these functional labs right here, these functional ra lab ranges, that's for the, the optimal oxygen delivery to every cell in your entire body. So let's go over exactly what is hemoglobin. Okay, so hemoglobin is a protein. So again, re remember, if you have any digestive problems, constipation, uh, uh, constipation, diarrhea, irritable bowel, Crohn's disease, gas, bloating, acid reflux, GERD disease, all these things are going to indicate that you're not actually breaking down enough protein to actually make the hemoglobin molecule. So the hemoglobin is a protein in red blood cells that carries oxygen from the lungs to the body's tissues and then returns carbon dioxide back to the lungs. So in the video, you actually saw that. 
So this right here, down here, this is pretty shocking right here on how the body works. The red blood cells contain several hundred thousand hemoglobin molecules per red blood cell. So let me just state that again. Each red blood cell contains several hundred thousand hemoglobin molecules. So this right here is the hemoglobin molecule. So within one red blood cell, there contains a couple hundred thousand of these hemoglobin molecules. And then right here, the heme right there, that's the iron. Okay, that's the iron in the heme. And guess what? That's where the oxygen will attach to. The oxygen attaches to the iron heme or the, the, higher, the iron molecule within the hemoglobin molecule. So, we, so this, let me state that again. This is the hemoglobin molecule. You have roughly a few hundred thousand hemoglobin molecules per, per red blood cell. So what this shows right here, this is showing the red blood cell and this is just showing one heme molecule, or I should say hemoglobin molecule, it just shows one. But in reality, in each red blood cell, there's a few hundred thousand. And this right here, what you see right here, that's the iron portion. Okay, that's the iron portion. So we're just zooming in on one red blood cell and one hemoglobin molecule. So you can see this is the oxygen molecules right there. So you just breathe in the oxygen and then the oxygen molecules attach to the iron. And this is where you kind of see that right in there. You see where these iron here, you can see where, oops, you can see where, uh, you can see where in here that the oxygen is actually attached to the iron. So to summarize this slide again, the functional range is between 13.5 and 14.5, what, what am I thinking right now that this person has 12.3 has uh, level of hemoglobin? Well, it's not outside the medical range, the conventional system, but it's lower than optimal. So I'm thinking right now, this woman probably has some kind of digestive problem and she's not absorbing enough iron and consequently if she's not enough if she's not absorbing enough iron in her in her bloodstream and enough protein she's not making enough of these hemoglobin molecules to deliver oxygen and right, so right off the bat, right off right off, right off the bat when I see a marker like that I'm thinking okay uh, there's something going on here she's not actually delivering and getting optimal oxygen delivered to her body. All right, let's go on to the next marker here. So we're gonna talk about the uh, red, red blood cell count. So the red blood cell count, lab range, we want this, uh, or I should say this is the conventional system, is 3.8 to 5.1. Now this is my patient here. She's sitting at 4.4. So here's the functional range, right? So it's not like, uh, you know, she, she's, she's not like really outside of the functional range. So what is the red blood cell count? So let's just go over the de that definition. So the red blood cell count is a blood test that your doctor uses to find out how many red blood cells you have, all right? The test is important because red blood cells contain the hemoglobin. That makes sense, right? Let's just jump back to here. This right here, this is the red blood cell, and within the red blood cell is, let me just clear this off. This is the red blood cell, and within the red blood cell is the hemoglobin, all right? So this is important because the red blood cells contain hemoglobin, which carries oxygen to your body's tissues. The number of red blood cells you can't, the number of red blood cells you have can affect how much oxygen your tissues receive. Your tissue needs oxygen to function effectively. So uh, right here, and this is just another picture. This would be a picture with plenty of red, red blood cells. You got plenty of red, red blood cells. You fall within the functional range. 
you fall within the functional range, uh, things look pretty good. Now, this is when you start to get anemic. One, that your body's not producing enough RBCs. That could be one problem, right? Or a second problem could be that you don't have enough hemoglobin. You don't have enough of this molecule in your body or in your red blood cells to deliver oxygen. So when you look at the red, your red blood cell uh, markers, it's not, uh, it, it can be complex. There can be a lot of moving parts uh, that are happening uh, when we talk about someone that has a physiological tendency towards anemia. I like this. This is a really, really good visual right here. So here, what we have right here is it's pointing these little yellow things right here. That's actually the hemoglobin, right? So if you remember, the hemoglobin has the iron in it, and it needs protein, and it needs protein in there as well. So check this out. One heme molecule can bind up to four oxygens. So you see the oxygen's coming in right here. This is the oxygen. You have enough RBCs, red blood cells, so you have enough of these, and on top of that, you have enough hemoglobins, which make up the red blood cells. The hemoglobins are these little yellow things right there, right? So that's going good for you. So then what can happen is then, then the oxygen can attach to all of these little hemoglobins, right? And here's the, you have, here you have a red blood cell that is fully oxygenated. It goes to the tissues. It releases the oxygen to the tissues and your tissues get good oxygen. Nothing can get better if you have a slight a tendency towards being in an anemic state. You need to have the oxygen. Nothing's gonna function optimally if you don't have oxygen. Then you can see here, those red blood cells, um, they're off or the oxygen is off and then you can see the hemes are uh, bare again. Okay, so then again, right here, we just have the normal hemoglobin. So this, what we're talking about here, the hemoglobin is these little things right in there. Okay, your hemocrit. So let me just, I'm just going to move back a couple slides here. So your hemocrit, we just covered a couple things. We just covered the red blood cell count. We just covered the hemocrit, or I'm sorry, the hemoglobin. Now what we're going to cover is we're gonna cover the hemocrit. Now I'm not a huge fan of the uh, hematocrit marker, um, and I'll show you why. But basically what we have going on here is the hematocrit marker. Uh, so what really, this is, a, this is like a, a percent volume, okay? So the hematocrit, is uh, the, the range right here is 37 to 45. This is my patient, 37. So what I'm showing you here is all the same patient. So the functional range here is 37. So again, I'm looking, hmm, she's got a couple markers that really aren't looking very good. They're, they're looking, they're, they're trending at the low side of, of, of uh, functional or optimal range. And what a hemocrit is, is basically, it just, you spin the blood, right? You spin the blood, and then you just kind of measure how many red blood cells you have compared to the plasma. So it's just a ratio, and that's why I don't really like it too much. So in this scenario right here, this would be normal. Basically, it's stating 45%. When you spin your blood out, you want 45% of the volume here to be red blood cell. Now, what's happening in here, you can see this is an anemic state. You can see that you have more plasma right here, right? See, we got the plasma, that's the plasma right there. You have more plasma and less red blood cells. So here you only have 30% of this whole volume right here is of red blood cells. Now, one thing I don't like about this test is if you have, um, if you're dehydrated a little bit, it's gonna throw the test off quite a bit. Because right here, there's a lot of water in that solution right there in the plasma. So here you can see that someone, if someone's dehydrated, it can really throw the whole marker off. So when you go get blood work, that's why I tell people, make sure you drink lots and lots and lots of water because that can, can throw this marker off because this is all 
or I should say a good portion of that is actually uh, water. So when I, when I look at the hematocrit, um, I'm, I'm just looking at all these markers. You have to look at all the markers. There's not one marker um, that's superior, except the, the ferritin is, is probably the most critical out of all these. Okay, so now what we're going to start to move on to here, we're going to start to move down to some other markers, which what we call here, we call this the, um, the mean cell volume. So let me just go back a couple markers here where we go over the general markers here. So where we're at here on this chart, we're going to be looking at the, um, the MCV right here. They just abbreviated MCV. And what that stands for is mean cell volume. So if you just look at that, it's the mean cell volume. So what that really indicates is we're looking at how large the red blood cells are. So you can see right over here, we have three different red blood cells. Um, so you see here, this would be, this is a normal red blood cell. So if you have a smaller red blood cells, the volume, right, how much space it's taking up is less. And then if you have a larger one, right, so if you have a larger one, that's taking up more space. So what we have here is let's look at some labs. So MCV, mean cell volume. All right, just how much space something takes up. So the lab range is 80 to 100. And this person here, this patient is at 84.1. Functional range is at 85 to 91. So again, she's on the lower side of functional range. So what does this tell me when someone comes in with an MCV that's on the smaller side? That tells you that the red blood cell is small right? It's smaller than what it should be. Now, when I see this, okay, this can be caused because you don't have enough iron in your body. So right now, this is, this is looking, hmm, this is, this is not right here. She probably has some kind of iron deficiency. Now, clinically, what I see clinically is I see this number right here, 91. Usually, I see this greater than 91. So meaning that you have a large red blood cell. So over here we have a large red blood cell, and over here we would have a small red blood cell, right? So this, this here would be 85, which would be small. And then this right here would be greater than 91, or let's say this would be 100. This is a large red blood cell. So this is a large red blood cell. So clinically what I see, I see a lot of people that generally have larger red blood cells than normal. So larger is not necessarily better. You want this range right here between 85 and 91. Now generally speaking, if I see someone that has an MCV, and again if you have prior labs from your doctor, they probably have ran these tests. So uh, if you have prior labs, you can get out and look at these. But this here is due to a B12 deficiency. So B12 deficiency or a folate deficiency. So when I see someone that has red blood cells that are large on the larger side, I'm thinking, hmm, okay, they're not absorbing B12. Well, why aren't they absorbing B12? B12 uh, comes from protein, it comes from meat, but B12 can be very difficult to actually digest. So again, it comes back to the digestive system. If you have an abnormal digestive system, you're probably not making enough hydrochloric acid. You probably don't have enough good digestive enzymes to actually extract B12 and folate out of the food that can make the red blood cells be a normal shape. So when I look at these markers here again, I'm really looking for functional tendencies and trends and this can really lead me and give me a lot of information here on how well are you uh, absorbing food. If your red blood cells aren't healthy 
in the functional range, that tells you that your digestive system probably is not functioning right. Unless you're like a vegetarian and not eating red meat. If you're eating red meat and your red blood cell markers are not within a functional range, that's just telling me functionally your digestive system is not working right, your digestive system is not working right, and you're not getting delivered good oxygen to your tissues. I mean, you need oxygen to you know, give oxygen to these uh, tissues. Okay, so the next marker we're going to go to, which is what we call your mean cell hemoglobin concentration. So let me go back a few slides. So this is where we're at right now. We're at this marker right here, okay? The MCHC, abbreviated the MCHC. So it stands for the mean cell hemoglobin concentration. So what is this? This is just kind of really simple. This is just the average concentration of the hemoglobin in your red blood cell. All right, so um, lab range right here is 32 to 36. Functionally, we like to see this between 32 and 35, and here's my patient right here. So what this represents is the hemoglobin, if you remember the hemoglobin molecule, it just represents the average hemoglobin in the average red blood cell. So some of these markers kind of overlap a little bit. They're kind of very similar to the rest of the markers, okay? But I guess the big takeaway is when you look at your blood work, you just want to make sure that you're within these functional ranges when it comes to these markers. All right, so this is one that I find uh, very useful clinically, and this is called the red blood cell distribution width, or the RDW. So this measures the range of variability between your red blood cells. So what does that mean? Um, before I go over that, let me just cover a couple things. So what we have down here is the RDW, which stands for the red blood cell distribution width. This is the lab range. This is the functional range right here, 11.7 to 13, and this is my patient. So she's outside, right? She's outside of the lab range. So she's sitting out here. So she definitely has some problems. So what exactly uh, is this marker? What does this, this marker actually mean? So in here, this would be your red blood cells. So what we want, when we look at your red blood cells, we wanna see your, your red blood cells all basically have the same size. They should be very symmetrical in shape, all of them. So if you look at all these red blood cells in this pattern right here, they're fairly the same, all right? They're fairly the same size. Now let's look at this down here. You can see how we have a big one and how we have a small one. So I'm just gonna draw a picture right here. So we have a small one and then we have a big one. So what this cell, what this actually measures, so this is a cell here and this is a cell. So the red, the red blood cell distribution width, the RDW, measures really the variability in size between the smalls and the big. So the variability or the difference between this number one and number two is great. It's greater than, let's say, 15. Okay, it's greater than 15. So in fact, this woman, it's 17.6. So what this is telling you in this woman that she has a lot of small red blood cells and a lot of large red blood cells and the difference between the large and the small is really great all right so what we really want is we want your red blood cells to be very symmetrical and not a lot of size variance so you can see this one might be a little bit small this this is a little bit bigger okay so let me just draw that again so here so you might have here, it's a little bit bigger, but not much. When we compare red blood cell to red blood cell, these are very pretty much symmetrical in size. 
This is where the problem comes at is when you have a small one, small ones, and then you have big ones. You don't want this, okay? This is bad news. Now, generally what happens is when you have this happening, this is due to a B12 malabsorption problem. So again, when I see this level right here, I'm thinking, you know, this woman has uh, a B12 absorption problem. It can be B12 and it can also be poor iron absorption. So it can be multiple things. So again, when you, when you look at the, uh, your, your, your red blood cells, there's a lot of information that you can actually get from, from looking at your red, red, red blood cells. Uh, so I know this is a lot of information, and what I suggest that you do is that you just take this in bites, listen to it, go back, re-listen to it, maybe just listen to a couple things, go back and re-listen to it, because this can be you know, overwhelming, and you know, I've been studying this stuff now for, for years and years and years, but at first it took me a long time to understand, but if you go over this and review this, and I think this video will give you a lot of good visuals on you know, what's actually going on with your body. So in my opinion, this marker is probably the most important marker that we're gonna take. It's called ferritin. So iron is so critically important to your body that, that your body stores this in organs. So it stores it in, in your heart, your liver, your pancreas, your digestive system. So just let me state that again. Air, uh, ferritin is a marker of organ storage. Your body relies so heavily on iron that it stores iron in your organs. So what this marker measures is the storage in your organs. That's how important, um, that's how important ferritin is. Now here's the lab range right here is between 20 and 280. My patient's at 12. Functionally, we like this between 40 and 100. So right now, like I'm seeing this 12 right here and I'm thinking she's never had this checked. She's, uh, I think she's probably in her, her mid fifties. She's been tired her whole entire life and no one's checked her ferritin levels. They've done all these other tests and they were within normal limits, right? So this is where the functional medicine actually uh, comes to play. So here's here's a visual uh, down here. So I'm hoping you you I'm hoping you can understand this visual. So we have ferritin, which is stored iron. Stored iron in what organs, right? It's so ferritin is stored iron in organs. Now right here, this is what we're going to talk about: the red red blood cell changes. So I'm going to go back a few slides to this slide right here. So what we're looking at is this is the ferritin, right? So that's the storage. That's a storage marker. And all these rest of these markers are red blood cell markers, okay? So so make sure you understand, this is a storage, and these seven markers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven markers here are representing what's happening with your red blood cells. All right, so let's go, let's get back to here. So I really like this, this is a real visual, good visual. So you can see here these red blood cells, this shows the, the changes in your red blood cells, so over a period of time right here. So this is normal, normal storage, normal red blood cells. So this is the ferritin marker right here, okay? Now your iron is starting to get depleted, right? But your red blood cells look what? Normal. See, here's your red blood cells. Your red blood cell morphology is normal. So we go on, and I'm just gonna say this is phase, this is phase one, phase two, phase three, okay? So in phase one, you have a tendency towards an anemic state, you just can't be diagnosed yet. Your red blood cells are normal here. 
you have no organ, you have no iron storage in your organ, so you're sitting at a ferritin of 12, okay? But that has not affected your red blood cell changes. So if you just do those standard seven, which I just looked at, those standard seven panels, which is what the conventional system does, they're gonna say you're completely what? Fine. But in reality, all your iron is completely depleted. Then what happens here, then in phase three, your iron stored is all gone. Then it starts to affect your red blood cell. Then you have some kind of problem. Then you have anemia right here. Then you're like, oh my goodness, we can diagnose you with anemia. But the truth of the matter is your condition started happening way back here. Maybe that was 10, 15, or 20 years ago that you had this condition. Okay, so ferritin marker is a very, very critical marker to check, and it's not checked in the conventional system. Okay, so um, here's some blood work of a 63-year-old female that came into me. So what we have going on here is this is a ferritin, right? So chronic fatigue. Initially, it was 12. Now, you can see this. These are the dates. Now, every time you see the circle right here, this is when I've checked this person's blood markers, okay? So you can see when you get into a functional medicine program, I mean, we're checking this stuff pretty much every two months. So what's the first thing I started off? I did the initial blood work, and then I found out that her ferritin was 12. I'm like, we have to fix that. Nothing's happening until we start to handle, uh, until we start to handle your ferritin levels. So we started supplementing her with iron and B12, okay, and B12. And you can see here, last marker, we got her to 42. If you recall, we want this to be between 40 and 100. Now we can start working, working on all those other things. Now let's go over to here. This is the RDW. Let me just zoom back a little bit here. So if you recall the RDW, the RDW is the difference between the small and the big. So that would be great, right? This would be a very big difference right here. We have some big ones and here we have some small ones. Let's go back. So this is the R, this is her RDW. You can see up here we're sitting at 18. Functionally, where do we want that? Do you remember where we want that functionally? We want that functionally between 11.7 and 13. 11.7 and 13. So let's just put that down here. We want that between 11.7 and 13. So when she, she, she started initially, they were really big. So she had a lot of small ones and a lot of big red blood cells. We don't want that. What do we want? We want symmetrical red blood cells, right here's a little variability right here. So as this marker goes down, what does this tell you? That the health of your red blood cells are functioning better and can deliver oxygen to your cells much, much more efficiently. So this is the power when it comes to you know, functional medicine and really diving down and figuring out uh, these cases right here. All right, so she's actually a 63-year-old female. So here, I want to show you this. This is a really, this is a really good visual, I think. So this right here would be a normal red blood cell right in there. Okay. Then you can see here how we have these large red blood cells. We don't want those. Those are large red blood cells. And then we have small red blood cells. We don't want that either. We want these normal, healthy red blood cells. And then what do we have right here? These are red blood cells, but they don't have any what in them? They don't have any iron. So when you have this lo like low hemoglobin, uh, low he uh, hematocrit, uh, low hemoglobin concentration, this is what your red blood cell looks like. It's pale. So if this is what's running around in your body, how well, how well is this red blood cell going to deliver oxygen, right? oxygen to, to your cells. How well is that going to do that? It's not, right? So you're going to be chronically fatigued. And if you have autoimmune diseases, these 
diseases will grow in a body that's not getting good oxygen to the cells. So here's uh, another uh, here's another example of my patient. This is the MCV. So if you remember, the MCV is how large the red blood cells are, right? So you don't want large ones. You want nice symmetrical red blood cells. So this is just measuring the average size of the red blood cell. So when back here, when she started, we're way down here at 80, right? This is at 80. So then right here, we started supplementing her with iron, B12, and I also started working on her digestive system. And you see how this, now here, she had really baby, small red blood cells here, right? These are, these were baby red blood cells, baby red blood cells, really small because the volume is down. Then right down here, uh, we are at 91. We really want this right around 91. So now she has larger red blood cells and they're more symmetrical. Then right here we have the MCHC, which stands for, for um, mean cell hemoglobin concentration. So remember the hemoglobin is what carries the oxygen in the red blood cell. So this is measuring the average hemoglobin in the average red blood cell. So look at that when she first started here. The lab range here is really narrow, right? It's 32 to 36. So just going from 32 to 34, I mean, that's a huge difference. So you can see what's happening again every time, um, every time we, we check these lab markers. Those are where we check them. And you can see here, this is the same person, 5353, 629, 629, 1021, 1021. Okay, uh, this is the last picture right here. I'm just gonna kinda, I like this visual just to kinda summarize things up, uh, I think. So let's look over here. So this would be someone, this is a red blood cell that doesn't have enough iron, doesn't have enough hemoglobin. This right here would be a, a, a too large of a red blood cell. These would be too small and awkward. And these are the red blood cells that we're kind of shooting for. These are the normal healthy ones. These would be in the functional range. Here's another example of um, a normal. See right here it says normal red blood cell. And right here we have macrocytic, which just means macro just means large. So this is a really good visual so if your lab markers are not within the functional range, you have on a visual scale, depending on where, where they are, you can, have, you can have this happening where you don't have enough uh, iron, right? You don't have enough hemoglobin in the red blood cell. You can have small abnormal red blood cells. You can also have red blood cells that are large. And none of these are delivering oxygen effectively except what right here except a normal healthy human being red blood cell okay so I hope you uh, I, I hope that's brought some value to you I know this is a lot of information but this is a really critical piece to understand because if you don't address your iron status and your sugar levels no disease process is going to get better and uh, if you're watching this video, you've probably come to see me because you have some kind of chronic degenerative condition that's just not getting better. So I hope you found value in this. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to get a hold of me and uh, take care.